Um, Axel says, I was wondering when you're trying to make something less organic but still in sketch mode, how you can get precise, consistent bevels with trim dynamic. Um, let's see. Let me write that down just in case because I might have something that will pop up in my brain later. So this will be uh, precise bevels with trim dynamic. So yeah, if you're doing, um, you know, let's just do it to her head. So what I'm going to do here is... If I want to make this more statue, I'm going to go to uh, BI Brush Insert Sphere. And I don't have this across any sort of symmetry here. So I'm just going to just pop an eyeball right in there. And we'll go ahead and move it forward a little bit. Looks like I went a little bit large. Let's go ahead and scale this thing down. And we'll just push this right in there. There we go. And then we can do W, Control Shift, and that'll pull out a copy and constrain it along that axis there. We can control drag, control drag again. And there we go, fill up our eyeballs. Um, if we did want to kind of start polishing this up, we can go into H polish here. And now for this one, I'm going to go ahead and turn alpha off because we're going to do a little bit of hard edge sculpting just real quick because it is it's relevant to the rock stuff we're doing right now. So I can go ahead and um, just start polishing this stuff up and we can go across here. Of course, ideally, if I was doing this for real, I'd be working in... Uh, symmetry. Even if this was a separate mesh, I could always work on it symmetrically and then add it into the rock later so I don't have to sit here and do um, a whole bunch of working across an axis here to make this symmetrical. That's that's not time well spent. So, so uh, when you're doing this, think ahead, which I didn't do, obviously. Um, now, you can always use da uh, Damien Standard as well. You can use Damien Standard for cracks if you want to, and that's just B, D, S, Damien Standard here, but you can also use it for hard edge stuff. If you hold down Alt, you can pull out two edges here. So if you just go ahead and, yeah, we'll just pull our brow out here. And you can use this for your armor concepting too as well if you're uh, thinking about doing that Wonder Woman stuff. So you can go in here and then use your clay brush. And again, we'll just turn that off, off temporarily while we're working on this hard surface stuff. Then you can build up to those edges like so. And we're working at a fairly low resolution. I might change it, crank it up just a bit temporarily. So we'll go from 136 to like 240. And you'll notice as, we, as we're working, we're going to be using my custom menu here. But I'll try and remember to tell you guys, hey, it's Dynamesh right there. Um, if you want more info on that kind of stuff because it is super useful to have that at your fingertips especially when you get into stuff like uh you know what let's go ahead and do this we'll do mirror and weld uh so like mirror mirror and weld mirrors in your deformation menu and then mirror welds in your geometry modified topology menu so it's kind of difficult to get to but let's go ahead and orient ourselves if we do want to go across the x-axis here so we'll make our lives a little bit easier i'm going to rotate this with transpose this way and this holding down shift and then holding down shift there we go and now she is Z forward. And we're going to go ahead and in the floor, you can turn on X and Z. And we're going to line her up so that she's right down the middle there. And then we'll turn the floor off and we'll do a quick mirror and weld. And we can keep modifying this. We move Scooter over just a bit. He's a little bit wide here. Let's go this way. A little bit more. Close enough. So now uh, we're mirrored. We're going to Z forward. So if I turn on the floor again, you go to the bottom here, you're going to see that little blue line going straight forward. Uh, now we're Z forward, we're mirrored across the x-axis. So when I hit X, um, we can sculpt across the x-axis symmetrically. And of course, that's just going to be turning on x-axis symmetry here. You're just activating that, tapping X and X again. You'll just toggle that on and off. Um, cool, awesome. Thanks for the kind words, everybody. I'm glad the... Glad the uh, training videos are helping on YouTube. Uh, I'm just starting learning ZBrush about a month back. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm dumb. I don't have the proper concept of using the brushes. You're not dumb. Um, it's just a matter of getting in there and getting comfortable with the tools you have. I will say you have to have some sort of tablet input, whether that's a Cintiq or a Wacom Intuos. I'm using, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, I'm using an Intuos Pro tablet. That's all I really use. Um, I used to use a Cintiq at Sony and it was okay, but I, I prefer a tablet. It's a little bit more portable for me while I'm doing demos and stuff on my laptop. But if you're trying to sculpt with a mouse, you're going to have a really hard time. Um, H polish is one of those brushes. So 
for example, if I'm over here and I'm H polishing, then I can kind of polish down and then polish up. H polish is one of those feather touch brushes where you kind of got to get a feel for it. And if you don't want this thing flopping around, the icon flopping around while you work, you can always go to preferences, edit, and then turn off a line cursor to surface. But um, it's really one of those brushes where you got to kind of get a feel for how it's working and you can hold down alt and then let go of alt and you'll get really nice polished surfaces. However, if you're trying to sculpt using your mouse, that's like turning pressure sensitivity off. So now if I'm trying to go over here and H polish, um, you can kind of do it, but it's really difficult to control, you know? It's like, oh, I want to keep this curve, but I want to just polish it up and you're like, Bruh. it just destroys your surface. Um, that's where the tablet pressure comes in. So a tablet, I can just go over here really nicely and just really feather touch along these surfaces here. And again, we're just holding down Alt and letting go of Alt just to kind of polish down the corners here, like so, like this. Now the original question, if I can go back to that, um, yeah, pressure temp sensitivity is super important. Um, yeah, yeah, d check out the uh, Intro to ZBrush series, which will be right here. That's a good start. It's, and it's very linear, so you should be able to just go through. Once you get all the way through Intro to ZBrush Part 1, it's like 50 videos. Um, or if you're using ZBrush Core, you can use that. It's a little bit uh, less features than full-blown ZBrush, but it's also a little bit simpler, which is a good thing. So you can definitely check that out. Both of them, you can use the trial, the free trial. Uh, if you go to the Pixelogic website, I think it's 45 days if you want to just check out ZBrush or Sculptress is another one. Um, I haven't used Sculptress in a while. It won't have all the same stuff. It's kind of a different program, um, but you can definitely go check that out. But um, the original question, let me scroll back up. It was from Axel. Uh, less organic, so let's get, I can get precise, consistent bevels of trim dynamic. So there's a couple of tricks you can use. One of them is just being very precise with your brush stroke, which is probably not ideal because uh, that's, that can be a little bit hard. You have to have a very steady hand and which at, you know, early in the morning with pre-workout in my system, I'm definitely not gonna have. Let me crank up this resolution just a little bit more while we're doing this hard surface stuff. I'm on our Dynamesh here. And it oh, looks like Project got turned back on. That's why it's taking so long. Um, like I said before, I do use Project if I'm using really low resolution meshes while I'm doing like creature stuff just to keep my meshes super low. But I'm going to go ahead and keep that off because there's no point in having it slow down on this type of thing. So it's much faster if I have that. Uh, again, we can hold down Alt with Damien Standard to pull up to a sharp edge. And then we can use our clay brush here to kind of build up. Whoops build up to those edges here, just kind of fill those out. And then you can go in here with H polish and kind of just polish these back down. You can also use pinch is another good one if you wanted to do, you know, and we're gonna definitely rock this up in just a second, but if you wanted to just go in here and like stylize a face for some reason, um, you could certainly just do that and then hold down shift and then uh, yeah, go into your pinch brush and you can just go along these hard edges as well and you could pinch them back. And if you also wanted to just, if you wanted to just narrow out our face, you could also use the pinch brush just to kind of do that. I use that all the time, or just specifically the nose. You can go through here and just pinch the nose, pinch the eyes, pinch the mouth, you know, all sorts of cool stuff you can do. Um, let's see if we can go this way. You can pinch the eyes that way. So really broad. And then, of course, it's going to be doing some pretty crazy stuff with your geo, so I would Dynamesh after that just to kind of get your surface reworked and uh, back in working order here. You can also go in here and add a little more crevices. Um, we're not talking about cracks just yet, but like I mentioned before, you can go in here and just start making cracks. Um, if you're going to do that, it just as an aside, I would go into your lazy mouse here. By default, the damn standard, Damien standard is, uh, has a lazy radius of one to kind of smooth your stroke out. If you turn that off, it's a little bit easier to kind of do thick to thin and kind of just get that nice kind of cracks look. Because as soon as I turn that lazy radius on, it's going to want to smooth out your stroke and then it just looks like you have wobbly lines on there. Uh, we'll get the cracks in a second. So anyway, also I tend to make my H polish brush a little bit oversized. So you can see I can go in here and again, I'm just holding down Alt and then letting go of Alt and just polishing out to these corners in here with a slightly larger brush. And this is all brush tablet sensitivity that's allowing me 
to have that kind of feather touch and get that kind of look. Now, let's say I wanted to bevel these edges here. Well, H polish is respecting those edges. So we can go through here and it's gonna make my ed keep my edges sharp. That's that if you go into brush settings here. Um, let's see, uh, modifiers and then samples. Uh, you're gonna see if we switch from like the standard brush, what our samples looks like, like preserve edges down to one. If we switch over to H polish brush, you're gonna see preserve edges up at like 30. So there's a lot of different sample um, settings in there you can kind of play with to get your brushes to respect edges a little bit more. Um, let's see, make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, yeah, there is a list. So what I'm using right now, it's a little bit dated, but if you go to, I have a video actually, and it's got in the description of this video will be all the hardware stuff I'm using. Let's see, Lumi questions and we have workspace set up. So this is what I'm on right this minute here. And that'll be just everything I'm using with as far as tablet. And I'm just on a laptop because it's just easier for me to be portable there. Um, intro level tablet for ZBrush. There's some pretty good ones. In fact, there's one tablet that comes with ZBrush Core for free. So that'll save you. I mean, that's if you wanted to just kind of get that. Um, I forget which one it is. I think it's an Intuos or a Wacom. Um, I prefer the Wacom Intuos, but... I'm not being paid by them to say that. That's just what I end up using. I, I'm, but it's been a while since I've shopped for them, so I'll shop around, and I'm sure there's pretty good reviews that'll get you something, something good. And you can always buy. I mean, what, my Intuos. I bought my first two when I was in college, used, and I ate dinner off the thing. These things are nearly indestructible, so you should be able to, you know, if you wanted to buy a used one, hopefully, that'll work out as well. If you want to save a little bit of money. Um, any tips for controlling concave angles and keeping them nice and clean? Um, you can, like in here, if you, yeah, I use H polish. And so when you're H polishing here, it's going to want to kind of dig in. But if you hold down Alt, it will kind of build up to that surface. So I kind of just go back and forth and try and, you know, build to that edge here. And then, of course, you can always go back in with your pinch brush and straighten that out. And then if you need to in a pinch, no pun intended. It's not the pencil brush, but you can go in here with your move brush. And if you want to use your move brush with the curve, accu curve turned on, um, you can actually go in here and start pulling out two angles as opposed to if you have that off, it's just going to pull out to like curves. If you want to pull out to squares, just turn that accu curve on. And I actually have a move brush with accu automatically loaded here. So now I can just kind of pull out to corners here. So if I wanted to pull out to corners on the nose, I can go through here and just like pull these out to a corner, pull these in to a corner here like this. And I can kind of just pull these down to a corner. So now those are kind of cornered out. And now I can go through here with H polish and kind of just get that look going. And then of course you can always you know, work in the round going around here. Let's go to the bottom here with our move vacuum and just pull that out to a corner here and then kind of start straightening these things up. Um, now, if I really wanted to control this, I would consider this just a sculpting concepty pass. And then I would rebuild this form here and really straighten these out and go and increase them and then project my detail back just so I'd have a lower res cage to modify here. So we can go ahead and pull this down and we'll go in here with our clay brush. We'll build up and then we'll build up here. And then we'll go in with our H polish here. So H polish and smooth. And you can also mask concave and convex if you wanted to do that. So I'm going to do a little bit of that to get polygroups, just to get back to the original question of trimming along these hard surface edges. Um, so what you can do is you can go into your trim brush here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off alpha temporarily. And so like we were saying, with our samples turned on, if we go to H polish, our preserve edge is up on 30. If we go to trim dynamic, you're going to see our preserve edges back down to one. And the reason is we don't want to preserve edges with trim dynamic because we want to obliterate our edges by putting a bevel right along here. Now you can get really nice sculpted bevels in here. Um, let's go ahead and read Dynamesh. But like uh, Axel was saying, it's kind of hard to control along these surfaces here. So one thing I will do is let's do a couple of different things here. So one thing you could do is you can go into mask lasso, invert that mask, and then you could just rotate your camera around. And then you could just 
get it right. So you're looking straight down that edge here and then go in a clip curve and then just start clipping these back. And that'll get you kind of a straight line here. Now, of course, if your underlying model isn't that straight, you'll have to go back in here with H polish and kind of just push that back just a bit. Um, another option you can do is with your trim dynamic, go into stroke here and make sure uh, you can hit L to toggle lazy mouse on and off. We'll crank that lazy radius up. And now we can have a little bit of lazy mouse to kind of even our stroke out. Feel free to go in there and crank that up as much as you need to just to kind of go along that line. Um, another option, let's go ahead and take the stroke menu and throw it out over here. And we're going to go to backtrack, snap to track, line here. So if we change it to a line, we can actually just pull a line straight out. And then as we go back and forth across this line, it should snap to that line, but you got to be really careful. And it should, it kind of needs to be straight in this case. Um, I mean, you don't have to turn on line, but it is kind of a nice thing to be able to just plop a line in there and then just snap to your backtrack and you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that'll just kind of trim that up. Of course, this line isn't perfectly straight. See how it's kind of wobbly a little bit. So I probably need to go through here and just tune that up just a little bit before I start using that. Um, but like I was saying, you don't have to snap to a line. You can go to a spline or a path. You can drag out a path here and then you can kind of trim dynamic along there. So if you wanted to go along this path here and then you could just backtrack back and forth along it, you can. Um, let's see, yeah, so that's one way you can do that. And another way is, let's go ahead and turn off backtrack here. You can hit W and that goes into your transpose line here. Now, if you wanted to snap your camera along that line, you can just drag, click and drag down, find that line. Let's do that a little bit better here. And we'll hold down control and tap that white um, circle at the end. And if you hover over the white circle, you'll see there's instructions at the top and it says camera, control click to restore the camera to default orientation. Um, so what that'll do is take your straight line here and move your camera so that you are now looking at this line straight. So now what you can do is you go into your trim dynamic brush and you can just hold down shift and that'll just snap it along that straight line. Now again, we're kind of assuming that you want to do your bevels in a straight line, which may not be the case. Um, so one thing you can do, and getting back into masking concave and masking convex, if we hold down control, I can go over here. I have two mask concave and mask convex set up. And what that's controlling here is this curve, uh, no, sorry, depth pass here. So if I hold down control, and I switched to mask concave, I basically turned on my depth mask. This was from something Joseph Druss did a while back. Um, so depth mask, if you pull this down, don't pull it, pull that outer depth all the way to zero, but a very small number will do it. So let's say like 0.0912 is fine. Um, you can do that for your concave and then for your convex, it's the opposite. Just pull this bottom one up. And so now what you can do is when you're masking, it'll actually go through and respect these uh, concave and convex edges. So obviously if you're gonna be doing this, you're gonna wanna be a little careful because there's so many concave and convex areas. So I have to switch back and forth to concave here to get these inside edges and then back to convex to get these um, outside edges here. But you can go through and very quickly start masking out areas and poly groups and just catching those edges like this, like so. Uh, and let's go ahead and do control alt as well. And we'll go ahead and get those. So. If you wanted to, you could also put a curve right along here and then trend dynamic along that curve. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and we'll hit control W, which will give this its own poly group here. And then you know what? Let's do control W, uh, control shift, select that poly group here, control shift, drag, and then control W this one. So now we have two poly groups here. Now if we want to, we can put a a curve right along this edge. But if we want to clean this edge up, what we can do is isolate this and then we can just go to um, polish by features, which is under your deformation menu here. And you can just polish um, that out a little bit. Um, you can also just mask the edges here. So if we go to mask border control, oops, mask border, invert that and then do polish by features. That'll just leave the rest of the stuff alone. And then what we probably need to do, I'm going to mask, well, Let's turn everything back on, control shift, bring everything back. And then we can use our move accu to kind of pull back out the corners here. 
So now that we've done that, and yeah, we probably don't want to dynamesh just yet because we want these nice smooth curves here. Um, you can go into your trim dynamic, and let's say, let's say uh, we'll open up this, we'll control shift click this polygroup border here, and we'll go to stroke, curve functions, polygroups, frame your mesh with a curve. Uh, let's say stroke. Oh, uh, we probably want to, let's do border since it's an open border here. So we'll go ahead and frame our mesh with a curve. Uh, now at this point, if you wanted to do like brush BC, brush curve tube, you can just click right on there and just put a tube right on there or whatever brush you want to like brush curve strap or brush curve dragon bone. That's why it's got a brush insert and there's insert curve brushes here. So if you wanted to go into like put a hose along there or a bike chain or whatever, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and just do a hose. You can just update these uh, on the fly. Now, of course, some of them aren't going to behave nicely. So we'll go back to the original curve and then we'll just put a hose on there, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, and then we also probably want to turn X off just so it only does one copy here. So we'll make that a little smaller. There we go. Um, anyways, you can also put a brush along there as well. So if we wanted to do trim dynamic, I'm just going to go to my trim dynamic brush and we're going to drag our stroke menu. Oh, it's already over here. And for this one, we'll turn on curve mode uh, for our trim dynamic brush. And what that means is as I'm click on this curve, it'll go ahead and trim dynamic along that curve as I push and pull this curve around. Um, it's not working so great here, but my surface isn't really that nice. If you want to get rid of this curve, you can just tap off and away from the curve, or you can go to curve functions and just hit delete, and that'll delete your curve as well. Um, maybe not the best result there, but I'm trying to think of another way where you can just have, and really honestly, if I'm just doing sculpting stuff, I would probably just settle with turning my lazy mouse on yeah, turning my lazy mouse on, uh, cranking my lazy radius up, and then just kind of you, oops, let's turn off curve mode. And now you can just kind of go along here and then clean up as needed. Let's go ahead and turn X back on here. So here, and then here, and then down the edges of the nose here, and then down the cheek here. And you can see even if it gets a little wobbly, I can try and just re-go down here like so, and then just to do a little bit of H polish cleanup here. Probably not the best answer. Wish I had a better answer for you. Uh, but you know, again, if I am just concept, concept sculpting, I can always go in and rebuild. It's not that big a deal. Um, 